Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our to chapter 12. So this is our last chapter. We'll do an intermediate algebra. It's pretty exciting. Uh, so chapter 12 is all about inverse, exponential, and logarithmic functions. Uh, today, uh, we're first going to start out with 12.1, which is all about inverse functions. And before we dive too deeply into inverse functions, uh, we're going to just start with some vocabulary, okay? Uh, so a couple definitions just to start off with. Uh, the first is a relation. So a relation is just a set of points. Any set of points, it could be continuous where we have a nice graph that flows, or it could just be points by themselves. But any set of ordered pairs, that would be a relation, okay? Um, a function is a specific relation in which the domain corresponds to exactly one value of the range. So what you're probably used to is basically for every x value, there's only one y value. Okay. Now, you may have two different x values that have the same y value, and that's okay. But every x value just goes to one y, it doesn't map to two. And you might remember us doing the vertical line test to see if it's a function or not. So, for example, a parabola like that would be a function. Every single vertical line you possibly try goes on th through one point. Versus uh, if it was like a sideways U like that, it would not pass the vertical line test. It would go through more than one Y value for each X value. Both of those are relations. This one just isn't a function. That one would be, okay? The new terminology for you today is a specific type of function called a one-to-one -one function. And a one-to-one -one function is a function in which each x value corresponds to only one y value, and each y value corresponds to only one x value, okay? So for every x, there's one y, for every y, there's only one x. It goes both ways, okay? So basically there's one x value for one y value, okay? And it goes both ways. Every y value only has one x value that it goes back to. So if you wanna think about the visuals of what does that look like on a graph, our parabola up here, it actually wouldn't be a one-to-one -one function. It's a function but it's not one-to-one -one because there's two different x values with the same y value. So to check uh, for the one-to-one -one function, it needs to pass the vertical line test and a horizontal line test, okay? So that parabola that we had up above, it's a function, passes the vertical line test, but you can have a horizontal line that goes through two points, okay? For, through more than one. Uh, versus like a cubic function, which looks kind of like that, that would be a one-to-one -one function because every single vertical line goes through only one point and every single horizontal line you could possibly draw goes through only one point, okay? Uh, so a couple examples just to have them in your notes. Uh, a relation really could be anything, right? Uh, so if you just want to think of it as like a set of points, go for it. Um, so we could have, I don't know, 1, 1, 1, 3, 4, 5, you know, just kind of make up some numbers there. Any numbers you want to make up, that would be a relation. Uh, you also could have an equation for a relation, that's fine. Um, you know, you could have, you know, y equals x or y equals x squared, you know, any kind of a, a function or not a function. <laughs> you could have x equals y squared, uh, which would be the sideways u. That would be a relation, okay? All of these things are relations, okay? Uh, for a function, it's specifically uh, every single x value needs to only go to one y value. So if you want to think about points, um, this one is not a function because I have the same x value, one, going to two different y values, going to one and going to three. So that one's not a function. Um, I could change this to be a function just by changing 
this one to maybe a 2-3 instead, you know? I get to have 1-1, one, 2-3, one, and 4-5, then it would be happy. Okay? Um, if you want to think about the parabola up here, that would be a function. Uh, that would be y equals x squared. That's a function. And my cat is saying hi yet again. Come here. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to say hi to everybody? Good. <laughs> Alright, one-to-one -one functions. Um, this one actually is a one-to-one -one function because every x goes to only one y value. And each y value only has one x value, so it's actually both. Um, so it's a function and it's a one-to-one -one, one function. Very exciting. Uh, the y equals x squared, we talked about that. It's not one-to-one. But like y to the third or x to the third power, that would be one to one. Uh, y equals x is just is one to one. If you want to think about that, that's just a nice diagonal looking line. Uh, that would be one to one as well. All right. So there's some examples that kind of guide you. So let's do our first example down here. Determine whether each equation represents a one to one function. So really, you have two options with these. You can either think about uh, what do they look like visually um, and just do a quick sketch um, and do that. Or you can check, OK, if I plug in an x value, how many y's am I going to get? If I plug in a y value, how many x's am I going to get? You can do it algebraically as well. OK, uh, so I'll kind of show you both ways as we go along. So for example, A, we have y equals 2x minus 1. You might recognize that. That's a linear equation, right? It would have a slope of 2. It would have a y-intercept of negative 1. Uh, it would generally be shaped kind of like that, right? Uh, so would it pass the vertical line test? Yeah, it would. Uh, every vertical line you possibly could draw goes through only one point. Would it pass the horizontal line test? Absolutely. Every horizontal line that you could possibly draw also goes on through one point. So yes, it's one to one. Okay, and I like to just draw one dash one for one to one to make it faster. Okay. Uh, let's look at another one. We have y equals negative x squared. So from last chapter, you might recognize that. Oh, that's a quadratic. It's going to make a parabola, and that negative in front would make it open downwards. So I know the general shape is going to look like that. Does it pass the vertical line test? Absolutely, it would. It is a function. Does it pass the horizontal line test though? No, it does not. Okay, I go through more than one point. So, no, it's not one-to-one. -one. If you want to think about it algebraically, uh, for every y value, you can just plug in a random number if you wanted to. Like, let's say that y is, I don't know, 4. We're, we're not going to, with a negative, let's do a negative 4. <laughs> All right, let's say that y is negative 4. Then if you're solving for x, you divide by negative 1, right? So then you'd have positive 4 equals x squared, which would then mean that x could be positive or negative 2 to get that y. Okay? So what's going to happen is for every single y-coordinate you get, there's going to be two different x-values for that y, okay? except at the vertex. <laughs> but for all the other ones, you're going to get two different x-values. Okay. Uh, let's try another one. y equals the square root of x. So this one, you might not know what it looks like. Um, in case you're curious, it looks like half of a u. <laughs> But you may not know that. So let's talk about algebraic for this one. So for every single x value that you plug in, and you can just think about a number. Uh, what about 9? If I plug in 9, then I would take the square root of 9, and y would be 3. I would only get one y value. So does every x only make one y? It does. So for every x value, we're just going to take the square root of it to get the y. Okay, so each x goes to only one y. Does that sound good? Then let's go the other way. Okay, what if I have a y value and I wanted to solve for x? Well, if I start with y, uh, let's say that y is 
4 again. If you wanted to solve for x, you would square both sides, right? So then what you would do is you'd square it to equal your x. So let's say that y was 4, we would square it and say that x has to be 16. You'd only get one value for x, so that means that each y value only produces one x value. And so that is a one-to-one -one function. Okay. Last one we have, uh, we have x minus 1 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 4. You may recognize this. That's a circle, right? Uh, so it's a circle. In case you're curious, it has a center at 1, negative 2. It has a radius of 2. Um, all those things are neat, but you don't need to know them to figure out what kind of a, a relation it is, okay? So it is a circle. And does it pass the vertical line test? No. No, it does not. So you can stop right then and say, if it doesn't pass the vertical line test, it doesn't matter if it passes the horizontal line test, which, by the way, it doesn't. So it is not a function, so it can't be one-to-one, -one, um, but it doesn't pass either one of them. So it is not one-to-one. -one. Okay? There we go. All right, next up, let's finally get into inverses then, okay? Uh, so inverses really aren't hard, it's just the notation of them is a little different. So the notation for an inverse looks like this. It has like an exponent of a negative one, um, which does not mean an exponent of negative one, it's just a symbol for an inverse, okay? So an inverse of a function f is written with f to the negative one. Okay, so that's just the notation of it. It's in the form y comma x, which you're hopefully going to look at and say, wait, that's backwards. Exactly. That's all you have to do for inverses is switch your x and y. I promise. And that's it. Uh, so, and that makes your inverse function. The inverse is formed by interchanging x and y. Just switch them. That's it. Uh, the domain of your original function will become the range of your inverse function. The range of your original becomes the domain of your inverse. So if you need to find domain and range of your inverse, and you know the domain and range of your original, just switch them. That's it. So all it does is switches your x's and switches your y's. Okay? So when you have a, a set of points, like what we have in part A here, all you do is switch your x's and y's around for your inverse, okay? So the inverse of this x function, instead of 2, 5, I'm going to have 5, 2 as a point. And instead of the point 3, 6, would you like to guess? We're going to have the point 6, 3. Instead of the point 4, 8, now I have 8, 4. And last but not least, 8, 7, I will have 7, 8. See, wasn't that fun? And that's it, I promise. Okay, uh, would you guys like to try the next one? So the next one technically isn't one-to-one, -one, but I'll let you guys see if you can figure out uh, what it would look like if it was a function. So I'll pause your video real quick, and I'll show you the answer. Three, two, one. All right, so for part B, if it was a function, you would just switch them. You would have 3, 0, 2, negative 1, and 3, 1. Unfortunately, it's not 1 to 1. <laughs> okay? Uh, because there's two different x values that go to the same y value. You'll also notice that our inverse is not a function. Right? But that's what it looks like. All right, I'm going to continue on with uh, C and D in the next video, okay?